Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this week's GoDaddy Pro webinar. Uh, some of you were with us last week for how to help your clients sell online with WordPress. And this week, we're going to be going over how to sell online, how to help your clients sell online beyond WordPress. Um, last week, we kind of had some questions around other options that clients might have who were maybe using a POS or not using WordPress. And Justin is going to touch on some of those topics this week. If you didn't see last week's webinar, it's okay. <laughs> You're still going to be able to understand what we're going over this week. But if you would like to go back and watch that, we have a little bit of a blog recap here that you can get to through this link. And it also has a link to the recording as well. So you can go ahead and check that out. So um, how this webinar is going to work, uh, we're going to have Justin talk about the e-commerce solutions he wants to go over. He's gonna do a couple demos for us. And then we're gonna have a question and answer session afterward. So if you have any questions that you want to ask, you can go ahead and put those in at any point during the webinar. There's a little ask a question option down at the bottom of your screen. And just throughout the, um, throughout the webinar, feel free to participate in chat. We're all going to be talking to you. I'll be the GoDaddy symbol, <laughs> as you can probably tell from the link that I just shared with you. So if you see GoDaddy answering you in there, that's me. Um, so go ahead and do that. And I. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to introduce my um, co-pilot, Mike, and also Justin, who's going to be talking to you. But before we get to that, I want to go ahead and let you guys have a minute for a shameless plug. Share your website. We want to see who you are and who we have online with us today. Oh, we've got WebCami again with WebCamiCafe.com. Hi, Cami. Thanks for coming. Who else do we have? Oh, we got Philip. Hi. We've got sflwa.net. Hi, Cooper. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Mike Chorba here. Um, he's going to be manning the chat. Chorba, do you want to tell us about yourself? Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Chorba, and I am currently a community manager for GoDaddy Pro, uh, primarily dealing with the at GoDaddy Pro handle on Twitter. So if you are not following that handle, uh, please do so. We're going to uh, be posting a lot of fun and helpful things, including uh, links to our webinars, as well as recaps of webinar, webinars you may have missed. So uh, primarily today, I'm going to be hanging out in the chat, uh, posting some links that uh, complement what Justin's talking about. Uh, a little note about the chat. If you are a person who would prefer not to see the chat while the presentation is going on, uh, there is the option to minimize the chat in the upper right-hand corner of the chat window. So you can uh, minimize that and bring it back at any time. And also to reiterate, if you do have a question, uh, instead of posting it in the chat, you can click the ask a question button uh, in the lower part of the screen. And that'll place it there for Angela to present to Justin uh, at the end of the presentation. So with that being said, I'm going to drop my video, but I will be hanging out and chat with everybody. Thanks, Chorba. Yeah, if you want to stay tuned for any kind of events like the webinar series or anything we have going on with GoDaddy Pro, go ahead and follow us on Twitter with the GoDaddy Pro handle and Chorba will be manning that. And so that way you kind of know the face behind that profile. Um, Justin, you want to tell us about yourself and what you're going to be talking about today? Absolutely. Hey, everyone. Uh, Neely here. Uh, there's so many Justins at GoDaddy that I just get lost. So I've rebranded myself as Neely. Uh, but I've been working at GoDaddy now for almost eight years. And I think I started with designing WordPress sites right at around the same time that I started working here. Uh, I'm a essentially a project manager uh, for our partners program and perspective of care to make sure that they best support you all in your everyday lives, I would say. Um, but I'm talking about helping your clients sell online beyond WordPress. I was uh, super excited when, to, to kind of do this topic. I think I, I get so stuck in like the WordPress world, like, like that's all that I think about, especially when it comes to my clients. Uh, and I was really able to really dig in to 
the, the, the content and kind of have a different perspective of how I can really help my clients with the right solution, not always just it has to be WordPress. Uh, so that was really tough for me to do, uh, and I'm excited to kind of try some of these things going forward here. Uh, so I'd like to kind of gauge the just experience in our virtual room here. Uh, if you can go ahead and just put in the chat, how long have you been designing websites here? Again, I was about seven or eight years. I'm sure there are plenty here that, that beat me, but I welcome newcomers as well. So put in the chat, how long have you been designing websites? 97. I remember you talking about that at uh, WorkCamp US, Philip. Lots of experience since 2000, one year. Welcome. I feel like a, a, a baby, 2006. Groovy. <laughs> Cami says I am a baby. Uh, awesome. So I appreciate you guys jumping in and uh, adding that, that your experience there. It helps to kind of gauge this conversation. But again, I welcome newbies and I welcome you all that have been doing it a ton of time. Uh, just because I learned from you, uh, especially Cami. Cami has been fantastic with kind of sharing her best practices that I've, I've kind of stolen. But in a virtual world, your clients need something easy to sell their products and services online. Uh, like I said, it's not always, it doesn't always have to be WordPress. I, I live and breathe all things WordPress, but we got to put uh, our, our client hat on and really think about what's the right solution for them. So when we think about why selling online is important, if you attended last week's webinar, some of this is just rephrased here, uh, but if you haven't, catch you up to speed of why selling online is important. And that starts with increasing the reach of your client's audience. So not only do can they serve their local community with their business, they ha now have the opportunity to reach everyone in the world, which is fantastic regardless of location or time zone or really anything rather. It also makes it more convenient. Uh, if you're anything like me, you'd rather shop online at the comfort of your ho own home, on the couch, just relaxing. I've done more online shopping in the past month or two than I have probably all of last year, um, just supporting small businesses and uh, staying safe, but it makes it more convenient. And your, your website or their website ends up being their hardest working employee with having the ability to sell online. Never takes off, off work, never calls in sick, is always there, never complains, and it just makes it more convenient for that hardest working employee to serve their customers. And we all know the world is virtual with COVID-19 online is the new normal, uh, so we can't do business as usual. Things have to change and getting it online and being able to sell products or services online are, is super critical to a business's success. And you all have that opportunity to, to help your clients stay successful and stay in business. Uh, it also provides way more value to your clients. So not only uh, do they have a site that's just informational, it tells people about their business, uh, but they can really start to equate the actual ROI when it comes to their website. So they can see the actual sales generating from the work that you've done to make this awesome site a reality, right? Because uh, it's, it's sometimes hard to say, oh yeah, so this site's gonna do this, it's gonna get these visitors. But at the end of the day, they care about the numbers and the dollars that's gonna get back. And having that, that e-commerce type solution helps that tenfold. And also it allows you to earn more for your work. So you're able to get new work for, with uh, clients and you need to make this shift in this quick turnaround. Uh, and also allows you to essentially sell your projects at a higher rate because e-commerce is a little bit more uh, complex than a standard informational brochure type website. So the client gets more value, you get more earnings, everybody wins. Cool. And then there are uh, four components of an online store, as we all know. Hey, Justin, sorry to interrupt you. I'm not yeah. seeing the slides on the screen. Is it not sharing? Maybe. I would have interrupted you sooner, but I thought you were still going through. Uh, ah, here we go. All right. Let me get those in focus here. Sorry about that, guys. All right. 
Moving on. So four components of an online store. So we have our website, our products, our shopping cart and payment and our fulfillment. Now, when it comes to other solutions beyond WordPress, I know many of you create the actual site in WordPress, uh, but sometimes it'll be a different branch of the website. The website is a place that you, your clients get to tell their story uh, and really talk about who they are, why they do what they do and all the cool things that go along with their business. And then they have their products or services that they'll be selling on their website. For the most part, we don't want to set our clients up with just a site that just showcases products because it, it makes it hard for someone to just want to buy from them, especially if they have competitors uh, selling the same exact thing that they are. Uh, right. Because if, if I'm a visitor and I go on a site and I really fall in love with that brand, and I see that product I'd much rather buy from them than uh, a site that just has a product on there. Um, and then we, of course, need a shopping cart and payment solution. We can't just go up and hand them cash. We got to be able to pay online. And then fulfillment is really keeping how, how are we going to fulfill these either physical products or digital products to our customers? Uh, because that's something that we want to get ahead of versus wait till the very end and be overwhelmed with the amount of orders they're getting. Cool. So are we ready to do some solutions and demos? Go ahead and type yes in the chat if you are, because uh, I am absolutely ready to get through this. Cool. So we're starting off with Facebook shop. Uh, so I completely forgot about this solution uh, when it comes to setting up my clients with e-commerce. Uh, so Facebook lets you easily showcase your client's products directly on their Facebook page. It makes it super easy for someone to buy from them. Uh, it's free to set up. There's a selling fee of 5% per transaction. If that transaction's under $8, it's only 40 cents, but it shows up on Facebook pages. And the cool thing about this is you can link them to the Instagram posts. So we know that Instagram has one link out unless you have over 10,000 followers, uh, but you can create a just a regular Instagram post or story and link that post to your client's products when they sell which is a game changer when we think about the content that they're already creating. Now they can have that call to action be right to their products, which was super cool. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the initial setup because it asks a lot of personal information. Uh, when, but when you go to help your client set up, more than likely you want to have them do the first part. Uh, but like linking the business account, it's just choosing which business profile they want to set it up with. They can set up inventory and preferences, things like shipping options and return policy. And the payouts, this is their bank account information, which is why I'm not showing you all a demo of that. I wanna keep my information safe, um, but they'll be able to set that up. So if we look at what the end goal looks like as I hide these messages, um, it, it, it's pretty straightforward. You, they can adjust their homepage um, to showcase this right from the get-go, but they'll have a separate shop option. Uh, for some reason, Facebook thought this bike was in some sort of a legal product. Uh, I'm not sure why I didn't submit the appeal there, uh, but it, it's pretty straightforward. They can click on the product. It'll open up. They can choose the color. I did, forgot to set the stock here, so it shows sold out, but they have product description, uh, shipping and returns, click, clicky like this, comment, and even share, which is super cool. Uh, but adding a product is pretty straightforward. If you have admin privileges for your client's Facebook profile, you can go in and do this and manage it from your own personal account. You don't need any of their personal information, which is super nice. So we can go over here and add a product. Does it show up in the Facebook marketplace? I am not 100% sure on that, Anne-Marie. But there are, are different options, uh, like on use cases where you can set up uh, better set up your Facebook page shop and drive ads directly to these products uh, as well as set up that Instagram shopping. But the question was, does it show up on the Facebook marketplace? Um, but to create the actual product, it's pretty straightforward. You go over to products, you go to add product. And what is super cool about this is they have ad manually, which is pretty traditional. They have a bulk upload, uh, but there's also a use a pixel option. So say a client already has an online store set up, but they want to add products on their Facebook shop too, just for more exposure, different avenues for customers to buy from them. So you can actually set up the Facebook pixel on their website. So now if someone views that product on their website, their Facebook page is automatically updated with that product. 
Uh, so they essentially don't have to set up anything to continually add product and stock directly from their site, which I thought was super cool. But if we go to add manually here, we can see that it's pretty straightforward. We can drag and drop. Uh, I'll go to my favorite image uh, sourcing website and I'll choose another bike. I got some better pictures than last webinar. Cool, we downloaded that and then we can go over to here, just drag and drop it. I can add my images here, my cool name. description they can set SKUs. they can have this link to uh, their actual website if they want to have the checkout process on their website versus their facebook shop sale price actual price they can set product visibility and stock on these set up condition brand product tax category if they know this if not uh, it's probably not your responsibility to know their, their tax categories. Uh, they can set up their shipping options. They can set up shipping under settings or you can rather. And then the, what is the return policy? There's also a variant section. Uh, so things like different size shirts, different size bikes or colors or things of that nature. And it's pretty straightforward to update. Uh, you just type it in, put a comma, blue comma. And then again, set your prices. Groovy. So it shows, uh, thanks Mike for looking into that. So it indicates eligible products will appear in the Facebook marketplace. So super, super good benefit there. But we are done. And if I go back to my Facebook shop, You can see it's there. It takes a few minutes to process. Facebook wants to verify that uh, it's not an illegal product like my super cool bike, uh, but it's all set up and super easy to do. Again, they can set it up uh, the Instagram shopping, which I think is the biggest benefit there, uh, especially with everyone focusing so much on Instagram with all of that on there. Uh, Cami asks, can you sell gift cards? Um, so I, I believe there is a digital product option. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll have like an actual digital gift card type receipt, but it could be like a, a voucher of some sort you can set up. But the Instagram shopping is pretty simple to set up. You would click this button, choose the Instagram profile to assign it to, uh, and then the rest is done from the Instagram's end. But that is setting up Facebook as an actual shop, uh, again, blown away. I was so stuck in the, the WordPress ecosphere that I forgot there are other solutions out there. And now that I know that this is the thing, I'll absolutely be setting up my clients with this, even if I set them up on WordPress, because the more exposure they have and different avenues to sell their products and services, the better. Cool. And then the next one I wanted to talk about is, I don't know the actual pronunciation, but Equid. Uh, let me know if I got that right or wrong, Anne-Marie. But Anne-Marie sent this suggestion to me after I asked uh, in last webinar. Uh, so Equid is a pretty cool option here. So you can list 10 products for free and then they have a paid plan for additional products. Uh, it's a super easy setup, stands for, so Equid stands for e-commerce widget. Makes sense. Uh, so easy setup, you can embed the products and shop on most websites, whether it's WordPress or standard HTML or something else like that. I thought it was cool that they also had a reseller option with white label support. Uh, so when you go through setup, it asks, hey, are you setting this up for a client? And I chose yes, uh, just for giggles. And then I got a, a, an email shortly after saying, hey, you can actually be a reseller, white label, or just standard. Uh, and I wanted to give Anne-Marie some love here and show off one of the sites she built with uh, Equid. So this is Mesa de Vida uh, slash dot com slash sauces that she set up. Uh, of course, it's around lunchtime for me, so I'm always hungry. Uh, this makes it worse, uh, but it's a pretty nice design, pretty good flow. Uh, as we look into uh, the products, I like that it has the, the star ratings on here and the actual reviews, which helps with that social proof, makes people want to buy, uh, but it's pretty easy to uh, use and, and kind of go through. So I can add more, I can go to checkout. 
Uh, great description. There's a nice little upsell option here and then customer reviews, which is again, is super important to have that social proof for your clients to, to help with their sales. But thank you again, Emory. You are a rock star for sending this in. Uh, as always, I love to find new tools and be able to share it off uh, makes, makes it better. But that was Equid. It has got even better. Groovy. All right, now we look at digital products. Uh, there are a ton of solutions out there when it comes to digital products. Uh, Gumroad is one of the products that are uh, solutions that I've used in the past that I've had a lot of success in. Uh, so they're, essentially their mantra is that uh, Gumroad is for is e-commerce for creators. So what's cool about this is uh, you can set up films, courses, music, books. Uh, you can generate license key if you set up any type of software. Uh, you can sell multiple versions of whatever the, the, the product is. So if you create an ebook, you can have a PDF version for your customers to download or your clients' customers to download or an EPUB. There's rentals and limited time access. So if your client creates movies or courses or things like that, they can essentially have a time limit of, hey, you have 30 days to watch this. And once you start, you have 72 hours, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and then membership options as well. So physical products can be sold on here, uh, but their their main niche is that the, the digital sphere. Uh, so you can import your existing email list to add your customers into a sort of, sort of a CRM, which I thought was a very nice touch. Multiple currency support, depending on wherever your wherever their client or customers are, uh, they can still pay for them, which is super important when it comes to an e-commerce type solution. Uh, and what's cool about this is you, you can easily embed the products on most websites. Uh, being most of us are WordPress junkies, it makes it nice for us to really design the WordPress site with however we really want to, and then throw these products in for easy management. Because sometimes WooCommerce or some of those other solutions are too heavy, and they just need something nice and easy to, to sell their products on. Has anyone used Gumroad before in the chat here? Use it as a customer. And Cami has purchased from it. Victor's used it for lots of uh, eBooks. GoDaddy's read an article about it once. <laughs> cool. Uh, I definitely recommend you check it, check it out. Uh, I believe it's freemium as well. So you don't have to pay anything to, to try it out and see if it works for you. Uh, then it essentially works for your clients. All right, so selling courses. I didn't really talk about this, this niche uh, last webinar. I really wanted to focus on it with this one because when we think about the digital sphere and us uh, and your clients having to kind of change the way that they do business, uh, selling courses of their consultations or their trainings or just their knowledge in general has become a huge, has, has had a lot of demand. Uh, so Teachable is freemium. I believe it's, you can set up your, you can get up to 10 customers before you have to pay for their uh, just monthly plans or annual plans. It works with an existing website to where you can set up a subdomain like courses dot your domain name, uh, or you can set it up as a standalone website. There's built-in marketing tools like sales pages and landing pages to help try to convert visitors into buyers that you can set up for your customers international payment methods, it's easy to use dashboards, and you can add things like files, videos, quizzes, you can do code examples if your client uh, does stuff with code. Uh, you can even put custom code in a lesson. So if some, you need something more advanced for your, your, your clients to kind of portray off, you can go in there and just start hammering out that code to present in the demo itself. Uh, so I'm gonna show you all a demo of setting up Teachable with my fake school here. So you can set up multiple schools inside of Teachable. Uh, I've done just the, the free ones. I have Neely's courses. So I set it up on neely.teachable.com. I didn't set up a custom domain here. Uh, but when we go to it, it'll load up my little page showing off a redirect. <laughs> All right. So I've got my dashboard here. Obviously this is a fake school, so I don't have any signups. It's a sad day. Maybe I'll market it one day, uh, but it's pretty straightforward to use. 
when we go through the, the, the actual site, I think most of us will start to work on the design itself. So on the left-hand side, we side, we can go over to site and then it'll land on theme. We can put in our nice little site logo for our clients, our favicon. We can set up a homepage background if we want. We can have update our different font families to try to match it to our, 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 our client's brand. And then we can set up a custom color palette. So there's a couple of presets, uh, but I think for the most part, we set our, up our clients or our clients already have some type a, of brand color set that we wanna make sure that we match to a T, especially since this is essentially linking from their main website. We want the uh, solution to be uh, as seamless as possible, especially if we're, we're launching over. So, and then domains, you can easily set up your custom domains for your clients on the, their paid plans. You can set up navigation, bios, and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna go into and, and show you all how to edit the actual page. Uh, it's primarily uh, a, like a block-based type builder. Uh, so it doesn't offer a ton of customization, uh, but it's pretty, pretty easy to go through. So I threw in a couple of just random things. Of course, to grow your personal brand, find new clients, design websites faster. Uh, to actually edit that, you would just click the banner on the left and add in your content. Uh, same thing with your design. If you want to have different text color, alignment, things like that. Uh, to add in new sections, you can just go add new block. They give you a couple of options. Uh, what I like about this is there's a custom HTML option. I know a lot of us, uh, that's what we started in uh, before WordPress, just kind of go into the nitty gritty of HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all that good stuff. Uh, you can go ahead and add that in here, which I thought was a nice touch. Uh, but there's all sorts of different little things. Um, and I created just a quick and easy uh, little landing page for my school. But when we're done, we can publish the actual courses itself. Uh, pretty easy to manage, especially if a client, uh, if one of your clients want to go in and update it after the fact. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new course. So you just click create a new course at the top. Let's do sell beyond WordPress. Learn all the things for my course subtitle. So I'm creating my course. So it's gonna start off giving me my first section in my first lecture. I can easily change the section title. If I can type. And then my lecture, intro. As I wanna add new ones, I just go add new lecture and then type it in. Why sell online? Groovy. And then to actually edit the, the course itself, or the, the lesson rather, you would just click directly on the lesson and I can add in my files, I can add in my text, my quizzes. So if I wanted to add a quiz for this section, who's awesome, you are. And that is the right answer always, because you're awesome. And I can publish it when I'm ready. And then I have a little wheel at the bottom or a bar at the bottom. So I've already added my information. I've added all my awesome curriculum as you all saw. Uh, now it's time to add a price. So I have my pricing plans here, uh, free subscriptions, one-time payment or payment plan. Uh, so free uh, courses are great for lead generators. I think a lot of our clients uh, end up trying to, uh, when they do courses, they're like, I wanna sell, right? Uh, we, we, we should probably try to position them to set up some type of course as a lead generator, to get their emails and start them into the funnel that leads off to the paid plans but to each their own with, with your clients. I'm gonna keep this one free. It's already set up and done. And my, my, my course is published. And then if I want to preview, uh, you can set up a dedicated sales page for each of your courses. Uh, and it's the same type of block-based builder when you actually go in to edit it. Or I can see the course curriculum and show how it would look I really like the clean design with this, with Teachable, because it's focused in just on the lesson itself. There's not a lot of just randomness going on that would distract their visitors. But why sell a line? Who's awesome? You are, check. Correct, 100%. 
it looks like Cami has helped out a client using Teachable. It is awesome. Uh, yes, I, I would absolutely agree. I've used Teachable in the past as a student, um, and I thought the entire experience was fantastic. It is a little bit more expensive, as uh, you pointed out in the chat, uh, but there does come with a lot of stuff that that essentially makes it more hands off for you. So you can uh, set up your client with something that's super easy for them to kind of manage on the, for the long run. Groovy. And then the last demo I have here is the GoDaddy online store. Uh, so it's an easy to use builder, uh, which means websites can be built crazy fast. When I think about uh, using uh, builders for my clients, it, it's around how quickly and, and how how much customization are they wanting with their website. And if they need something like ASAP fast, I know that a WooCommerce full build is going probably going to take me at least a few weeks if I like really crunch on it. And that's not even good, the back and forth of getting all the content from the client. Uh, so with those clients that need something super quick, uh, I'm probably going to lean on a builder uh, and let them know that it's not going to be as customized as they may want, but it's it's going to be something that that they can start generating business off of. And if we need to pivot in the long run, we can still do that. Uh, what's cool about the online store that I see as a big benefit, and I, I completely forgot about it, is the ability to list their products on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Walmart, Jet, and a couple of more uh, with with just from their one location which means less management for my customer or my clients to do, uh, less management that I have to do uh, because a lot of that is a data entry. And I think that's my, the part I hate the most about e-commerce uh, sites is entering in all the data when it comes to adding products. Uh, but you can set up your Google My Business profile, pretty easy to use dashboard to manage orders, view reports and add products, uh, sell physical products, digital products, gift cards, um, and then if you do go with this type of solution for your clients, I'd recommend having your client set up the actual builder in their account and just using GoDaddy Pro to log in as your client and manage it from there. Just makes things a lot easier, especially if they want to go in and make their own edits and empowers them to be able to do that versus uh, not having that. So I created a super awesome Neely's Crafts uh, website here. Uh, so especially being in quarantine, I think I'm doing a lot of just random crafts with my daughter. Uh, so that's why I want to make my little newest crafts. Uh, I'm selling art supplies and it's more than just a store. Um, uh, but cool. So I'm going to show you how to use the website builder here pretty quick, um, and kind of go through some of the different nuances here. Uh, but inside of my dashboard, I'm going to show the edit website portion. Again, block-based type builder. I, I like to call the website builder uh, essentially like Legos, where I just kind of add my sections on top of each other and modify it from there. Uh, we have some COVID-19 type responses inside of the online store. Uh, things like a PayPal button, a gift card option, it can help your clients set up another PayPal button, contact form with information, hours, and fundraising for accept donations with GoFundMe directly online store. Uh, or I can add in other content as needed. Editing is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just click on it and adjust it. There is, are different themes. Uh, again, with builders, they're not going to be as flexible as WordPress might be, uh, but there's still different looks and colors and feels you can use with uh, GoDaddy's website builder uh, or any other website builder you might use uh, to accomplish this task for your customers. I'm going to switch it to this one because I really like that in your face color. All right, and now the, the store section here, uh, I'm gonna set up just a simple little arts and crafts project or product rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a product. I can just drag and drop. I'm gonna go back to my favorite site, Pexels. Type arts and crafts. All right, let's do this. Why not? So just drag and drop your product. Enter if it's physical or digital. Your name, again, pricing, all this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, tax category, standard, digital, non-taxable. This is information your, your client should have. 
set up your SKUs, your categories. You can have your descriptions here, inventory and options, things like your uh, styles or colors or qu quantities, whatever it might be. And then you can set up things like engraving, gift wrapping, accessories. You can set up our shipping options where it'll calculate shipping automatically or if they want free shipping, set up information for search engines and then save. So pretty straightforward with actually adding products itself. Um, but Pexels is great for those photos. Like Anne-Marie said, unsplash.com is also fantastic for photos. Uh, if your client doesn't have, a, maybe if your client sells like it's actual service itself, there's not actual product photography that, that could be used. Those sites are awesome to use to kind of use as just the product images itself. But that's it. That's the, the online store portion of it. You can set up your store, you can set up your products, the easy to use builder. Really, when you think about using builders outside of WordPress, I know like we live and breathe all things WordPress. Really want to think about how fast does this client need their site uh, and how much, uh, how, how creative are they going to want their site to be? Or if they're, if they're good with something just uh, standard, but still looks nice website builders are probably the way to go. If they need that, that customization and all the uh, bells and whistles, then WordPress is, is, is my baby. I'll always use it. But that is the, the, the ultimate uh, webinar that I have for you today. I wanted to go through uh, Facebook. It's primarily that one. That was a, a huge win for me personally, just uh, finding out and discovering uh, Teachable, Equid, online store. Uh, I may be missing one. Uh, thanks, Neely. Sorry for calling you Justin earlier. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I've been called worse. <laughs> Are we ready for some questions? Uh, I mean, I'm personally ready. Okay. I think you actually kind of answered most of these while um, during the presentation, but let's go ahead and go through them again. Uh, we had one that where someone asked, um, does it show up in the Facebook marketplace referring to the products you're entering on, uh, on the Facebook online selling option? Yep. And it looks like Mike, yeah. our savior, uh, found the answer there and it, it does show up in the actual Facebook marketplace. So again, even if your clients have a separate e-commerce solution, it might be something to bring up to them after this webinar and say, Hey, look how much value I can add for you. Let's get this set up. I think that's a huge one, especially for clients who definitely have their social media profiles set up, but don't yet have their website created. So if they're looking for a fast way to start selling online without creating their whole site, that would be a really good option. Yep, absolutely. Um, then we had the gift card question. That was also for the Facebook option. Uh, I think we did find that they could, you said they could sell digital products. Right. There's some sort of digital option on there. I, I don't think it's going to be a gift card as in they have like in-store credit to your business. Uh, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure we can get creative with the way that we set that up. Cool. I think Chorba also shared some information on that. So that's in the guys, um, there are comments in the question and answer section on those questions. If you wanted those links and you don't want to have to search back through the chat for what was shared there, um, what answers were provided during chat. Those are all in the comments as well. Um, we just got one from Cami. How does payment transfer to the client when selling on Facebook? Yeah, so when they go through the initial setup, it's gonna ask for their bank account information. Um, I don't, I believe it, it's instantly transferred to the bank once someone actually pays. That's not like a, you'll get it at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, it'll go direct to the bank account that they get set up. That's part of the reason why you were recommending the the client set up to go through the initial setup by themselves, right? Right. Unless you're like super friends with the client, they're comfortable with giving you uh, your their account information. Have it's them go through the setup. It's pretty brother. straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't want to share that with us. We don't. It does happen. Your bank account information, right? Can <laughs> yeah. we put that happens? I, I, yeah. I don't know how many times a client has just sent me emails of their passwords. I was like, yeah, here you go. Here's all this stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want any of this. <laughs> oh, thanks, Andy. looks like we've got another thing for selling gift cards there. 
giftupapp.com is the tool there. I haven't heard of that. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions, but a few people were asking, or were talking about you selling your own courses when you were doing the Teachable demo. Don't, you do have a course, don't you? Uh, like, not necessarily. I did a, a workshop uh, on social media that I threw up on my site at some point in time. It's something I plan on doing on the roadmap. It's uh, it's, it's prioritizing that time to create the courses, I would say. Uh, I mean, because we always say we're too busy, but it's, it's all about prioritizing. Uh, but hoping share a link from your website? Oh, yeah. It's just justineely.com. Yeah, I was going to send them directly to the courses. There's just that one. Uh, Andy asks, what are your thoughts on web pros creating their own courses for clients? I would 100% say that you should. Um, and I would, I, it would, I, I would even recommend teaching what you're doing, right? So you teach people how to design their own websites, because uh, at the end of the day, not everyone may want to work for you, but they'll see the value that you provide in, in like teaching. That's uh, so what way when someone else needs a recommendation, like All right, this is the person that can do it, or they they look at it, go through it, and like wow, this person absolutely knows what they're doing. I can't do this. I'd rather them do it. So the more you teach, the more you share, the more value you get, you'll actually end up getting more clients than you push away. I think you mentioned that on last week's webinar as well, right? The videos for setup when getting started yes. with e-commerce. Yep, uh, and just like Kami put here, uh, I use Loom videos as well, uh, just to kind of teach my clients how to manage their website after the fact. Uh, we can do it at just being proactive, how to design their own site or manage different things. Or even if it's a service that we may not be doing, but we know about, um, that we can kind of share and teach different people. And it could be a new revenue income for you as, as designers to where you're not solely focused on designing the websites. Now you have a bit of passive income beyond some site maintenance and things like that, where you're, you're selling courses even as you sleep. Yeah, that's a pretty neat option for people who really want to do it themselves and like take control of what they put on their website. Absolutely. We still have a few minutes. Anybody else want to share? Ooh, Andy's got another question. Uh, Andy's question is, what's your experience in helping clients with point of sale software, if any? Uh, I don't have a lot of experience here, um, so I'm not going to ramble or, or bring up anything that might make me look dumber than I already do. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You don't look dumb. <laughs> Anybody else in the chat have experience with point of sale software? Do a plus one or something? Victor does. That could be a webinar. It could be. As could be the one about making courses for your clients. Uh, and Marie says Shopify Lite is a nice alternate option to embed product buttons. I did not know they had a Lite version. I didn't either. I thought it was just Shopify. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> he says, I put the Square app on my phone for a garage sale. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> that absolutely counts. I mean, I, I buy from people that have the, the Square options, like yeah. our food trucks at work. <laughs> True. That's really cool. Looks like people are really liking Square. Square is legit. Yeah, with I mean, when it, when you think about like the how much of a market it has, I I think whenever I go to like a food truck or like, um, gosh, what are they called? The things, little markets on like Saturdays. I'm blanking on the name, but like almost everyone has a little Square dongle that. Uh, that use is just to sell their items on it. Farmer's market, that's the word. I actually used to sell jewelry at a local farmer's market as well, and I used Square. <laughs> so you guys aren't alone in that one. Yep, Square, Square add-on for our website builder. 
Yeah, Victor, if you want to talk to us about, if you want to connect with us about doing something involving Square, we're always interested in, um, you know, knowledge, sharing, <laughs> <laughs> sharing knowledge. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the next webinar on? Um, yeah, so the next webinar is actually going to be a comparison of our two partner plans, um, GoDaddy Pro and Reseller, um, and just, you know, what the differences are and actually the similarities because a lot of people don't know how um, similar they really are. Um, a lot of people might think, well, I don't want to just sell domains and that's my thing, you know, that's, that market's already saturated. Um, that's not all you can use Reseller for. and. Uh, you know, we're just going to kind of go over some of the differences between the two programs and which one you might want to use, which one might fit your business model better if you're looking to um, generate recurring revenue or expand your web design and development business or a marketing business. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, just website building directly. Um, there are other related businesses that kind of tie in with both of those products, actually, because um, GoDaddy Pro, you might think, well, that's just for managing websites when uh, we're talking about the future where you can uh, delegate into your client's GoDaddy account, you can do a whole lot more than just manage websites. So we're going to go over some of those. Actually, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> I'm going to be presenting um, that one next week. Uh, do we have, we do have a link. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, um, that's what we have going on next week. And also, like we said at the beginning of the webinar, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with the GoDaddy Pro product, all of the events we have, webinars, virtual events, and hopefully eventually in-person events, you can <laughs> follow our Twitter handle, GoDaddy Pro. Um, Mike, if you wanted to go ahead and plug that again for us, that'd be great too. There we go. <laughs> and when I say Mike, I mean Mike Chorba or Chorba. I keep calling people by their first names and really <laughs> you want last names. <laughs> I'll get used to it. I'll get it right eventually, guys. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. I think that's all we have for you today. Yep. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for uh, just being a part of the webinar and really thinking outside of the, the WordPress mindset uh, to a couple of different solutions. I hope you talk to your clients, especially about the, like the Facebook options or even just selling online to uh, help get them through this tough time, but also help you through this tough, tough time because we're all kind of in this together. Oh yeah, one last thing, I almost forgot. Um, I have a quick feedback survey for you guys. There are two questions, only two. If you wanted to give us a little bit of feedback on our webinars, that would be amazing. It kind of helps us you know, gauge uh, how we're sitting with content and our presentation style, our discussion style, everything. If we can get your opinions on that and your feedback, then we can make these better for you. I've got a link there in the chat. Go ahead, click that link, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. <laughs> <laughs> you won't regret it. <laughs> Opened up in a preview. If you'll bear with me just one moment, let me get you a better link. Oh, it's, you probably shared it to only I at probably, GoDaddy. Yeah. Fine, baby shark, do, 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 do. That's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> Just for you, Chorba. Luckily, my daughter's not here right now, otherwise she'd be yelling it. <laughs> Let me know if that one works, please. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, sorry about that other one. I really appreciate you guys. <laughs> and you, Justin, for Baby Shark. <laughs> uh, darn it, that part was recorded, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to be writing the blog recap here after this. Actually, I should probably let you know how you can see this after the fact. Um, 
I'm going to be writing a blog recap that we're going to be posting to the Garage blog, and we'll send a link to that out in the follow-up letter that we'll give you guys on Monday. Um, it's going to have both a recap and a link to the live recording so that you can re-watch this <laughs> if you missed anything or if you just want to hear Neely um, sing Baby Shark again. <laughs> uh, taking requests. I'll mark the timestamp on that in the follow-up letter for you. <laughs> This is my last webinar, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Neely's going to be joining us again for a couple more webinars later, so stay tuned. <laughs> See how many times we can get him to sing Baby Shark. <laughs> All right, I think we can give you guys a few minutes of your day back. What do you think? Works for me. Thank you all again, everyone. All right, the thanks, Neely. The family song, no, Andy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. I'll see you next next time, whichever time I'm on. I'll be intending almost all of these. So I'll hop in chat and talk to you. All right. Bye guys. <laughs>